The biggest mistake you can make in Rise of the Ronin is not petting all the animals you come across. But other than that, I've got 10 mistakes for you to avoid throughout your journey. I've completed the game and this is everything I've come across and there is a lot in Rise of the Ronin. So let's go. Let me know in the comments any tips and tricks that you have so we can all help each other out. We'll start with the very first decision you'll make, which is selecting a blade sharpening origin. Now, this does seem like an important decision, but it's 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 not, guys. It's really not. Like, you can pick any of these options, whichever one sounds best to you. Like, it doesn't really matter that much. Because really what you'll learn very quickly is that there's no actual skills or upgrades that are locked behind any of these blade sharpening origins. You can essentially learn any of them. It's really just like a stepping stone to sort of help you decide what build you want to play at the very beginning or like get some basic skills that you want to get. If you want some like general advice which one to pick, Killer is pretty solid as it gives you strength which is good just for your overall combat and Breaker isn't bad either as it does give you access to the dual assassination so you can assassinate two enemies if they are next to each other. Other, which is great sort of a early game buff really just to help you clear some content but realistically any of the skills here you can actually grab doesn't make that much of a difference it's just giving you a bit more of a head start into a specific stat as well as a head start by giving you certain skills but any of the options is completely fine now speaking of leveling up one of the initial really confusing aspects that i found in the game is actually these two bars in the top right hand corner karma and experience they seem very similar and they are, but they do have a distinct difference. Experience points can be earned by defeating enemies and completing like missions, quests, that sort of a thing. And you'll earn experience points there. And then once that bar fills up, you will level up and gain a skill point. Karma, on the other hand, is only earned by defeating enemies. And once you have maxed your karma, you can rest at a Veiled Edge banner to convert your earned karma into skill points and potentially rare skill points. The difference here is that you can only earn these rare skill points via karma as well as via certain skill books. And we'll touch on those in a little bit later in this video. But those rare skill points are actually used in the skill tree to unlock specific nodes on the certain different skill breakdowns, like say, for for example, in Charm, you can only get the Liar skill via Charm skill points. Now, you will earn Karma at a much faster rate than you'll earn experience, but the risk reward here is that you can actually lose all your Karma by being defeated in combat. Now, if you are defeated, you'll lose all of your Karma and it will start a Vendetta where you'll need to either defeat or critically hit the enemy that defeated you to get your Karma back. Very similar to a Souls or a Runes mechanic in FromSoft games and other previous Team Ninja games. Once you've got those tasty skill points, you'll need to decide where you're going to put them and in what actual skill tree. Now, typically in Souls-like and Team Ninja games as well, you know, general advice is not to stat spread. And I personally was doing that at the start. I was focusing only on the dexterity tree. I was trying to make like a dexterity focused build and, you know, weapons do scale with your stats. You can actually see this if you look at the weapon and expand their details. So I was really focusing on that. But then, you know, the further I got into the game, I sort of realized that it's actually a bad idea because all of these stats are actually responsible for specific attributes. For example, strength increases your your primary attack and your defense which any build is going to want but also there are skills in all of these different trees that are going to be relevant to literally any build that you make like a lot of the basic combat skills and like you know just increasing your overall max health are in the strength skill which you know obviously important right if you just want to deal more damage with your sword or whatever weapon you're using you're going to want that skill and really spreading out those skill points and picking the skills that are actually relevant to what you want to do is more important important than just trying to focus on one particular stat and you'll definitely find better success by spreading out those stats onto all of the different skill trees and actually developing your build in that way it is possible to reset your skills if you have made a mistake and like purchase skills that you maybe you don't actually use or want you can reset them at your longhouse to maybe try a different build or if you just want to make different decisions i will be covering a lot of this like build crafting and like stat stuff in another video which i'll link here once it is out so if you want to go in depth with all of this stuff then i'll link that here but it's also worth mentioning that sometimes on the default screen as well when you're looking at different weapons it can be hard to tell why certain weapons are actually better not only from their equipment level but there is actually like scaling from the weapons base stats to the actual stat increases you get from the stats you have you just need to expand those details and see that weapon scaling if you're just wondering a little bit more specifics there every single weapon also has combat styles some weapons have multiple combat styles more than three but for the most part most weapons will at least have three fitting into one of the three combat styles being 10 chi and jin 
each of these combat styles are effective against certain types of weapons and you want to make sure that you are matching the right combat style when facing the right enemy. You can tell if you've got the right one because next to their health bar there will either be an up arrow or a down arrow or just like a white basic arrow. Now white just means it's even, up means you're obviously using the right one and down means you're using a weapon that is ineffective or combat style that's ineffective against the target you are fighting. Now the reason you want to match these is because if you match them correctly when you initiate a counter spark essentially a parry you will deal additional key damage to that target which is like their stamina essentially right now if you break their stamina you can follow up with critical hits and using these right combat styles really makes a difference on some of the harder enemies in the game and actually being able to counter spark them which is a core part of the combat loop is being able to initiate these like parries being the counter spark mechanic you will absolutely be using this a lot and the more key damage that you can actually do the faster you can critical hit the faster you can take down these targets it really does make a difference. Now, some of these weapons will have more than three different combat styles. So it is important to make sure when you are picking the combat styles that you're equipping, that you've got one of each of the style types being Ten, Chi, and Jin in your three active combat style slots. Some weapons like the Katana also have like a Shinobi style, which is entirely unique, which doesn't fit the typical setups. But if you're wondering how to unlock these combat styles or even increase their rank as by increasing increasing the rank you unlock new martial skills and other effects like increasing the overall stat potential of the combat style if you're wondering how to unlock the combat styles there's a couple of ways one of them is by fugitives in the open world certain fugitives will actually say when you hover over them in the open world they'll say a new combat style is available you'll just need to defeat them and you'll unlock that combat style another way and probably the main way that you'll actually get them and level them up as well is via your allies most allies will give you a combat style once you become either acquainted or or friendly with them and then as you level up that bond status you'll then actually gain additional effects in those specific combat styles that they are unique to. In the early game I highly recommend to hunt these down as they make such a difference to your overall combat effectiveness and that leads us into the next point of not ignoring your ally bonds. Now your allies can actually bond with you and essentially by doing this you'll get those combat styles like we mentioned but you also gain additional other effects like in some cases they'll give you unique equipment that's unique to that character and some other things depending on the ally. Now, each ally will give you different upgrades and you can actually see this in your bond menu by looking at the ally screen here. You'll be able to see not only like their stats and weaponry that they use if they choose to join you on missions, which will actually happen as well. And the higher your ally bond ship, you know, sometimes they'll be a bit more effective in those scenarios, but also the different bond bonuses you get for reaching different levels. To increase the bond status, you can either give them gifts when they appear at your longhouse or you can go and find them in the open world and give them gifts or by doing their ally missions you'll increase their bond status as well and just by talking to them and picking the right dialogue options you'll increase that bond status and you know there are certain options that you do pick that you'll get more bond out of compared to others but increasing that bond status is definitely important and it's also worth pointing out as well that characters can actually die as part of the main story so if you want a specific item or say upgrade from them you want to grind that out as soon as possible but if you do miss out on that it is possible after a certain point to go back Back into the past and complete things like ally missions you may have missed or region upgrades those sort of things so just keep that in mind that you know if you aren't really chasing a specific upgrade you may want to do it now before progressing the main story just in case that ally dies based on decisions you make there is one ally you immediately need to bond like as soon as possible and that is Igashichi I'm probably saying his name terribly wrong so I apologize but this is the inventor guy that you can give foreign books to now he initially gives you your glider as part of the main story however if you increase his bond into his ally missions you'll unlock other things like the detector allowing you to detect enemies through walls or the fire pipe allowing you to essentially just have a flamethrower but the more foreign books you find in the world and give to him the more upgrades he will have available to you like having a glider upgrade that allows you to boost or reduce the amount of stamina or key that you use while actually being in the glider the more upgrades you purchase from him you will passively gain additional accessory slots. There is actually an option when you're looking at his technical development you can see that you'll gain additional accessory slots just by purchasing the upgrades that he has. So if you want to unlock those accessory slots which can give you additional stats and set bonuses and all that good stuff you need to do these technology developments. You can get foreign books by completing quests. If you're wondering if certain quests give you foreign books you just need to view it in your mission list. You'll be able to see if it does give you one so you want to make a beeline for those so you can get those upgrades. 
Also, don't forget about your horse either. At stables, you can buy tack and new horses. And along with the glider upgrades, this makes traversing the open world just really quick and a lot of fun as you can like combo jumping off your horse into your glider and vice versa. So you can play around with that and have a ton of fun. And while you are exploring the world on your horse or glider, completing regions is one of the easiest ways to gain skill points and an item called Obane, which is a great way to earn money very easily as well as bond jewels, which more on that a little bit later. Now, as you get your bonds in these regions, you'll unlock the locations of the specific collectibles in each region. So you don't need to search aimlessly. So you can actually get that bond up and then complete the more things in that region. You really should be doing this because the skill points you get are essential, right? Because then you can unlock new skills, which in turn increases your stat points, which in turn makes you stronger. But the more of these open world activities you do, you'll actually get silver coins. Now, silver coins you'll get for doing most of the open world activities, especially for collecting cats, which is just fun on its own. Like you should do that anyway. But the silver coins have unique vendors for each of the different type of open world activities, right? So for cats, fugitives, photography, etc. Now these will all sell you unique items like gestures or skill books, which you can then transfer into just straight skills, accessories. But the main kicker here is the specific gear that they will sell. So if you're chasing specific sets, you can actually use your silver coins to then trade that in for specific gear with set bonuses that you'll then be able to use if you're chasing like specific types of bonuses. Other vendors will also use these silver coins like black marketeers will often use them, which you can actually buy like weapon upgrades and armor upgrades from them with silver coins as well. So doing these activities to get silver coins and then trade them in for upgrades is really part of the like upgrade loop and it's one that's very easy to miss while you're just exploring and finding gear and most of the gear you find you may not actually be using because a lot of it isn't great now speaking of gear you are going to be getting a whole lot of weapons and armor and everything in between by default you have two thousand inventory slots which is quite a lot and there's a definitely a balance to strike about what you're going to do with this gear right so essentially all the old gear that you're not using or don't actually need you can disassemble it or sell it now there is a balance to strike here rarer pieces and pieces in general you should disassemble probably most of your gear because this will give you the crafting materials that you'll then be able to use to upgrade your gear as well as bond transfer your gear but you should still be selling a fair portion of the gear because one of the main blockers that I've come across in my late game was not having enough money to bond transfer or especially upgrade my main pieces for my main armor sets which you really should be doing. So each uh, item will have an equipment level right now this defines its stats overall like its base stats etc so this equipment level is really important now you can upgrade your items at any blacksmith and it is expensive to do not only from the crafting materials you get from disassembling but also just in terms of the actual money involvement that it does cost you really should be doing this because it makes a significant difference to your build your max equipment level is actually the same as your max player level or your player level so so the, as you progress through the game, and especially as you get into some of the harder areas, you probably will be a little bit like me and want to keep the set bonuses that you've got for like your specific build. But if you're wearing gear that's like equipment level 10, for example, it's going to be significantly worse than gear that's equipment level 25 plus, right? Like just the base stats itself. And those raw stats make a massive difference in not only your damage potential, but your defenses when you actually do take hits, which believe me, you will take hits. And then the other portion of this is bond transferring, which will allow you to move passives from certain gear onto other pieces of gear, right? So if you have a, you find a piece of gear that maybe it's not really something you're going to use, it could be very average. It could have a really good passive bonus on it. You can actually use the bond transfer screen to transfer that onto your main pieces of gear that you actually want to use. And this does require those bond jewels that we touched on earlier, which you gain from completing regions. So that's why that is also important to do. Another way you can make that that difficulty a little bit easier when you're on those main missions is by doing those optional objectives. They will also give you silver coins, which we touched on why they're important as well. But by completing these optional objectives, which typically just require you to defeat like elites in the area, the formidable foes, it'll actually weaken the final boss, making those encounters significantly easier on top of the other ways we just talked about with your equipment and everything like that. The last one I have for you today is to craft, don't buy. Now, if you're anything like me, you can't resist collecting everything you find in the 
the world, but make sure you're actually using this stuff, right? When you open a certain vendor's menu, you'll be able to buy items or craft the exact same items. In most cases, by simply doing some open world, you know, collecting as you come across items, just pressing R1, you'll then be able to actually craft items like arrows and bullets and other items that you may actually want rather than buy them for that precious currency, which you are absolutely going to need for upgrading your overall equipment. So just make sure you're crafting, not buying, you're not wasting that currency because you've probably got materials to just make that exact same item. But that's everything I got for you today, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips and tricks. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.